In physics and mechanics, simple harmonic motion is a special type of periodic motion. The restoring force on the moving object is directly proportional to the displacement x and is always directed towards the mean or equilibrium position. This elastic restoring force is given by Hooke's law. An object oscillates sinusoidally, as you can see here, about an equilibrium point, and a graph of position against time is like a sine wave, as can be seen here. These sinusoidal oscillations have a constant amplitude and a constant frequency. Now, one of the examples of a simple harmonic motion is that of a mass attached to a spring, as we will discuss here. The vibrations of a mass attached to a spring is in fact a specific example of a simple harmonic motion. At extreme position, force is greatest. And from Newton's second law of motion, we know that force is proportional to acceleration. So at extreme position, acceleration is greatest as well and is always directed towards the mean position or equilibrium position. At mean or equilibrium position, acceleration is zero and velocity has maximum value. Now the question is why we call these motions as harmonic. This is because musical instruments make such vibrations that cause corresponding sound waves in air. The vibrating parts of a musical instrument oscillates in sets of superimposed simple harmonic motions. Their frequencies are multiple of a fundamental frequency. In fact, harmonic frequencies are always a multiple of the fundamental as you, as you have studied earlier. Now, as I have stated that in case of simple harmonic motion, uh, the springs obey Hooke's law, which is that force is proportional to displacement. Now, in order to change proportionality sign into equality sign, we multiply right hand side by a constant quantity, which is k in this case. k is called Hooke's constant or spring constant. So, f is equal to minus kx. This negative sign indicates that acceleration is in the direction of force and is always directed towards the mean position. We can also see this from the arrows. You can see arrows indicate the direction of force and displacement and acceleration as well. So it is very much clear that force and acceleration are always directed towards the mean position. Now we will look at some of the other examples of simple harmonic motion. One of the example is that of vibrating strings of a musical instrument. Then motion of a simple pendulum is also simple harmonic. Molecules of the air vibrate with simple harmonic motion when single tone or pure sound waves travel through it. Moreover, motion of electrons in the wire when an alternating current flows through it is simple harmonic. Also, a small alternating electric current in a radio or TV aerial when it is tuned to a signal is in the form of electrons moving with simple harmonic motion. And also, atoms that make up molecule vibrate with simple harmonic motion. Molecules of hydrogen or a solid crystal are a few examples of it. A simple harmonic motion is defined in terms of the acceleration and displacement of an oscillator, swinging pendulum has positive displacement and negative velocity. The restoring force that acts to return the mass to its equilibrium position is always proportional to displacement of the mass from its mean position and is directed towards that point. This we have already studied in case of when mass was attached to a spring, when we studied this mass attached to a spring. Now, oscillations we observe around us do not go on forever. If damping is present, they die out, either gradually or rapidly. Now, oscillations of a swing is an example of it. Due to air friction, oscillations decrease and swing ultimately comes to rest. The amplitude of damped oscillations decreases or decays exponentially with time, as you can see here. Now, this is uh, just re repetition of the Hooke's law that I have already stated and explained. You can see that force is proportional to displacement. 
and k is the hooks constant negative sign indicates that force is always directed towards the mean position and if we the displacement is double the force is also double now two important terms that we come across in simple harmonic motion one is amplitude and the other one is time period amplitude is the maximum displacement from mean position and time period is time taken to complete one vibration these two terms and so many others we have already studied in wave mechanics today's topic is graphical representations of simple harmonic motion we will examine the idealized graphs of displacement velocity and acceleration against time t of simple harmonic motion and we'll see how the three graphs are related to one another moreover uh, we will also compare displacement time graph of this idealized case with that of when there is damping present or in case of damped oscillations and we'll see that in case of damped oscillations the amplitude of oscillation decreases exponentially with time and oscillator comes to rest ultimately now first of all the displacement time graph the variation in the displacement of the oscillating mass according to this smooth curve is described as sinusoidal thus mathematically it is a sine curve the amplitude x not which is the maximum displacement from the mean position and the time period t which is the time taken to complete one vibration can be determined from this graph we have considered the motion to start when the mass is at equilibrium position that is midpoint of its oscillation and is moving to the right hence at time t equal to 0 x is 0 any point in the cycle could have been chosen as the starting point but it is conventional to start as shown here with the blue color t is 0 then x is 0 this first curve is the displacement time curve now it must be noted that gradient of the displacement time graph gives the velocity of the oscillator at any time t that is v is equal to delta x over delta t as i have written on the left hand side or it is equal to delta y over delta x where delta is the small change it represents a small change and y is the y coordinate and x represent quantity at the on the x axis like x coordinate the velocity is maximum at t equal to 0 the shape of the curve is the same as for the displacement time graph and as it is a smooth curve it shows how the velocity v depends on time t the only difference is that it starts at a different point in the cycle as can be seen in this orange graph okay i'm referring to this graph that it starts with a different point it starts at a different point in the cycle and the reason has been explained earlier that at time t equal to 0 the oscillator has maximum velocity now it must be noted that gradient of velocity time graph gives the acceleration of the oscillator at any time t which is delta v over delta t as i have written in red color on the left hand side now the above curve has the same general form as for the above two curves it indicates how a varies with t or how acceleration varies with t i am referring to this green color graph at t equal to 0 displacement x is 0 and v has the maximum value therefore a is 0 because mass is at equilibrium position and no resultant force is acting on the mass at this point as the mass starts moving towards right hand side the restoring force starts acting towards the left hand side giving the mass a negative acceleration which is also now known as deceleration thus a is equal to a maximum or acceleration will have its maximum value at extreme position that is when the body is displaced farthest from the equilibrium position now we can see that acceleration time graph is upside down as compared with the displacement time graph thus a is proportional to minus x in other words whenever the mass has a positive displacement towards right hand side its acceleration is to the left and vice versa now on the next page again i have shown three kinds of graphs the idealized graph for displacement against time t velocity against time t and acceleration against time t and it must be 
clear to you now that all these graphs follow the same general form that is they are sine waves or are sinusoidal in nature. Left hand side again shows the same picture but in combined form like I have plotted the graphs on the same axis and it is seen that all these graphs have the same general form again. X is the displacement time graph, letter V shows velocity time graph and letter A shows acceleration time graph. On the next page, I will compare these kind of curves or in general, like we will see the difference between the displacement time graph in case of an ideal situation and in case of real life. And as I have shared earlier that amplitude of oscillation does not decrease with time in case of ideal situation, whereas in case of damped oscillations, if there are damped oscillations present, then what happens? Amplitude of oscillation decreases exponentially with time and oscillator comes to rest ultimately as seen here. This happens because of friction. 